Oh, oh man! Hello, hello, and welcome to Noggin. I've been watching Nintendo's E3 conference, and so far, Super Mario Odyssey is looking to be very close to my game of the year. Maybe it will even be that. But I'm a big Mario guy, so that makes sense. But still, with every new gameplay video we've seen, I'm getting more and more excited. And with all this new info coming out, Nintendo seems to be keeping a lot of this game's plot close to their chests. We don't have much to go on for story. We have Mario, a new world, and big and open worlds. But what is this about a magical cap? And why is Mario's new amiibo in a white tux, almost as if it matches Peach's wedding dress? Oh, are they gonna get married? Is this game all about Mario's wedding? Bowser has tried to marry Peach multiple times before, and he seems to be trying to do that again, but this time Mario was in a tux too! So was Mario actually going to marry Peach before Bowser crashes the party, or is there more to it than that? Also, this game seems pivotal enough, big enough, important enough, both in the case of the Mario universe and this big turning point for Nintendo as a company. So what if this is a major plot point that changes the Mario franchise forever? What if this game is near the very end of the timeline? What if Mario here pulls a Zelda and splits the timeline? Well, it would actually explain a whole lot. So join me on my journey as I explain why Super Mario Odyssey is the biggest and most important game in the Mario franchise thus far, and it is all because of this wedding. So what's all this about a Mario timeline? Well, there isn't any official Mario timeline, but there are numerous fan-made ones. Most of them just put games mostly in order of release, only moving some around when needed for context, like if time travel is involved or it's about baby Mario. Some more advanced timelines, like the ones made by the game theorists, look at every detail in the franchise and try to order them in a way that makes the most sense. Though, their timeline involves the idea that there are actually two Marios that we play as. Mario and his dad, Mario. Though, this has been personally disproven by Miyamoto himself, stating that Mario has been the same all throughout history, even back when his name was Jumpman, and even back when his name was Mr. Video. But this is where Odyssey may step in. It fixes the whole timeline issue of Mario in the Mushroom Kingdom versus Mario in Brooklyn. And it all has to do with this wedding. So first we should explain that. We can see on billboards all around New Donk City that a royal wedding is being held. It's a massive event, just like when real royalty get married, it's always huge. But wait, this isn't even the first time Peach was about to be wed. You know the culprit behind the plot. Bowser, of course, always kidnapping this poor pink princess and on multiple occasions attempting to force her to marry him or give him rule of her kingdom. In almost every single game, this seems to be the plot, and sometimes he's gotten further than others. What we know so far about Odyssey's plot is that there is some event that causes Mario's hat to be destroyed. And then he meets his new ally, Cappy. This odd hat seems to be in the native shape of a white top hat, very similar to Bowser's tuxedo color and style, which is also Mario's tuxedo style, which we know thanks to the new amiibo. This hat must have some reason for helping Mario, and at this point we are unsure, but I think it may be due to Cappy being wronged by Bowser in some way. Or possibly, Cappy just really likes our hero's red hat. Mario games are known for simple reasonings like that. This hat gives Mario the ability to capture or possess certain creatures that do not have headgear. Really, I mean, Goombas with hard hats are immune to being possessed. Even this T-Rex can't be captured right now because of this little cowboy hat it has on. It's some sort of hat-based magic. Perhaps Mario takes place in the TF2 universe. During this hat and soul-crushing event, it seems that Peach has been kidnapped again. It is unsure if she was getting ready to Mario, but interestingly, while being kidnapped by Bowser in a white tux, she is wearing a much different tiara from her regular crown. And we know Mario is right there, and we know that this is her wedding tiara. So, what if Mario proposed to Peach with this new tiara, and sometime, possibly shortly afterwards, Bowser stomps in? Hmm, maybe, but let's move on for now. Mario Odyssey is introducing more new bosses. The four rabbits that seem to be bent on keeping Mario away from the wedding are doing so for a very specific reason. This point was brought up during the E3 gameplay presentation. These four rabbits are running screen defensive plays to keep Mario from Bowser and his bride-to-be. 
And that's because these rabbits are brutal wedding planners, hired to make sure everything about the wedding goes to plan. And these planners seem to be going above the call of duty and stopping any potential wedding crashers. This also falls in line with why you keep seeing them, because, as confirmed by the same spokesperson during the E3 presentation, every location in this game has something to do with the wedding planning. Be it gathering flowers, the catering, gathering musicians, each location is important to its masterpiece. But who hired these planners? First thought of course is Bowser, that would of course be the simplest answer. They are just more henchmen trying to stop Mario from ruining Bowser's wedding, but since when does Bowser hire bunnies? Most bunnies in the world of Mario are kind and playful, and are in the Mushroom Kingdom. There aren't many opportunities for Bowser to hire them, so what if Peach hired the bunnies? What if she knew that Bowser would try something, so she hired the best and most brutal wedding planners she could find? But then why are they attacking Mario? This could be a miscommunication, as Peach may have described her groom as having a white tuxedo. Bowser being a king most likely has spies in her kingdom, so he knew about this, and so came to kidnap Peach while also wearing a white tuxedo to cause confusion. The bunnies, seeing Bowser in a white tuxedo far before Mario, they likely walked right up to him and started asking all sorts of questions typical for grooms from wedding planners so that they can build a repertoire. And while talking, Bowser lets them know that there's this small, mustached terrorist constantly trying to disrupt their kingdom's politics. And he must not make it to the wedding. And he even lends them his ships to help stop him. But then, why can't Peach just tell them the truth? Well, for the same reasons she never seems to fight back while being kidnapped. Because she's being kidnapped and being held hostage. She is entirely in Bowser's control. And while being held hostage, you usually go along with whomever is keeping you so that you avoid harm or death. More people need to realize that. The reason Peach seems so weak and fragile all the time is because she's being held hostage. It's not sexist at all. When you're being held hostage, one of the worst things to do is anger your captor. And Peach is no stranger to being held hostage. She knows how to survive during these kinds of events. And a skill she's used during many kidnappings is to not talk much especially in a way that would anger the captor, like yelling that she wouldn't marry him. And she knows that Mario is strong enough to take on a few rabbits and Bowser. She knows her hero can overcome any obstacle. So it's highly advised to quietly wait for help or rescue if you are in a hostage situation, unless your life is soon to be threatened. Speaking of those hostage situations, this isn't the first time Peach has been forced to marry someone. First, we have episode 19 of the Mario Super Show, Do You Princess Take This Koopa? In this episode, the Mario brothers were about to be crushed when Peach said that she would do anything to stop them from being crushed. So Koopa, wanting to be the legal owner of the Mushroom Kingdom, offered a marriage proposal, to which she agreed to save the brothers and the toads. Also, fun fact, King Koopa wears a white tux in this episode. Mario Odyssey's outfits are actually all references to past games. Then again, we see Booster trying to force Peach to marry him in Super Mario RPG. Of course, this time Mario and Bowser both crash the wedding, and Peach gives a kiss to Mario after the event. Then again, she is forced to marry Bowser by Count Bleck to create the Chaos Heart in Super Paper Mario. Of course, though, all these attempts have been thwarted by Mario just in time. And then, Peach just gives him a kiss or bakes him something, or maybe more. But after so many marriage attempts and rescues, why hasn't Peach just tied the knot with Mario to stop anyone from thinking that they could get hitched with her? If she were no longer single, she would be much less of a target for kidnapping marriage plots. Though, does Peach even like Mario? Is he just a bodyguard that gets a little close to his clients? Does Peach like Bowser? What if she is finally marrying Bowser and Mario is in fact a wedding crasher attempting to stop her? If she marries Bowser, what would that mean for the two kingdoms? A unison of the Mushroom Kingdom no longer split into a war with the Koopa Kingdom. It's not that far-fetched. A good ruler would set aside their feelings for the good of their people and country as this was done all the time in the olden days of yore. Possibly, Mario is a radical that constantly saves Peach from Bowser and delivers her back to the toads that are against the merger. Eh. 
Nah, that's, that's, that's too political. That's crazy talk. But let's talk about what would happen if Peach married Bowser or chose Bowser over Mario. Firstly, what would Mario do? That's actually a great question, and it segues right into the big timeline theory I mentioned. What if this event is what splits the timelines of Mario games? Before Mario Odyssey, he has always resided in the Mushroom Kingdom. As very recently stated by a Nintendo spokesperson that was on the E3 showroom floor in response to Endgadget's question, is Mario even human, it is said that that Nintendo's official statement to that question is, Mario is a native son of the Mushroom Kingdom, meaning that Mario was born in the Mushroom Kingdom. Meaning, as far as we know, he never lived in New York growing up, or became a carpenter on skyscrapers. So does he move to New York or New Donk City after his Mushroom Kingdom adventures? Well, if Mario has no peach or reason to live in the Mushroom Kingdom anymore, what would a pipe-loving dude do? Well, get a job. A plumbing job. During his travels in Odyssey, he meets Mayor Pauline, the singing leader of New Donk City. It is shown that she is rebuilding New Donk City after some event destroyed most of the city. This opens the way to the construction jobs Mario has had, along with his jobs as part of a deconstruction crew. It also opens the way for starting a cement factory. Pauline also becomes the new love interest, as we see in the original Donkey Kong games. It's possible that all of these games happen after Odyssey in the bad ending timeline. Yeah, getting some Zelda timeline splits in there. This is all in the bad ending where Mario fails, and Bowser winds up marrying Peach. There is a good bit of evidence and logic we can use to make this sound like a plausible case. In Super Mario Odyssey's title theme and Pauline's hit song, she refers to herself as Mario's one-up girl. I'll be your one perhaps one level up from Peach. New Donk City happens to be set up perfectly for the Donkey Kong games, with exposed girders and construction equipment all over. And sometime down the line, after all these events, he opens his own toy factory, selling toys that are based off his old friends in the Mushroom Kingdom. In Mario vs. DK, Pauline is seen helping him in his business ventures, and helps run his mini land theme park. There are even toys of Pauline that Mario makes. Being such a prominent businessman, it would make sense to have a close relationship with the mayor, and this may eventually evolve into a romance. This could also be an explanation to Super Mario 2 just being a dream. Mario is reliving his days in the Mushroom Kingdom in his mind, and in Mario 3 he makes a play about his adventures on New Donk Broadway. Plus, this timeline split in Odyssey would not only satisfy all those classic games, but also another set of Mario games. In the good ending, Mario arrives and stops the wedding just in the nick of time. And since he already proposed to Peach beforehand via the tiara, and since he arrives in his magical white tuxedo, the wedding goes on and Peach finally marries Mario. But this would create a problem. Bowser kidnaps Peach to try and gain control of the Mushroom Kingdom. The only way for that to work legally and politically is to marry her, but if she's married now, then what's the point of kidnapping her? What's the point of this seemingly never-ending war between the Mushroom Kingdom and Koopa Kingdoms then? Well, now there is no point. Not anymore. And Bowser sees this, and decides to, begrudgingly, call it a truce. And with this newfound peace, they now can compete in ways other than war and kidnapping. They compete in sports and kart racing. Explaining the old question, why does Bowser hang out with these guys if they are enemies? Because, at this point onwards, there's no need to be enemies anymore. Just rivals. But clearly this would have to be very close to the end of the timeline, but this works out well because of another game that would have to be the actual end of the timeline. And it's a game you probably didn't expect. When Mario is missing, at the very end we see Bowser actually die. It's pretty gruesome. Bowser dies all the time, but it's always off-screen or it's in lava. Off-screen deaths are never true deaths, and Bowser can clearly survive lava after being revived via magic. Even after falling into a black hole, he lived via some sort of magic that was off-screen. But here, he doesn't die off-screen. And while he can survive extreme heat and pressure, here he dies via extreme cold and shattering. Bowser is dead at the hands of Luigi. But how did it come to this? Well, Mario and Peach now being married, Bowser can no longer just kidnap Peach and marry her and gain control. So, after doing his sports, he gains tired and wishes again to gain control of the Mushroom Kingdom. And since Peach isn't marriageable, he instead kidnaps King Mario. 
to hold him and his whole kingdom hostage. But Luigi is having none of it. After creating so many fond memories of playing sports together, how could Bowser dare do this? So Luigi, very distinctly, kills Bowser. The only games possible after this one in the timeline are the games without Bowser present in them. Dark. But really, this is entirely speculation. Mario Odyssey isn't even out yet, but I do feel that at least some of this could be true. Mm, just a smidgen. But really, this is just fun speculation about a favorite franchise. So what do you think Mario Odyssey will entail? Let me know your thoughts and theories down in the comments, and be sure to check out these other great Mario videos too. And until next time, please remember to never stop using that noggin.